the hurricane came on August 28th on a Saturday night and apparently blew off one shingle uh, from the roof, which caused some water leakage into the hallway by um, the Williams Place side of the building. Now that section of Memorial School is over 115 years old. The original building was the two front classrooms east, which would be the two classrooms in the front door to the right, and one classroom going towards the back. That's the original building. So that original building had beadboard ceilings in the hallway, which is a tongue and groove type of, uh, of a board that's nailed to the joists. And that was the finished ceiling painted the cream color 115 years ago. Through the years, the, that, when they continued with the uh, additions to the building, they built the, the next addition was to build more classrooms towards the back of the building. And then they came around and built the rest of the, of the, of the circle, which would be the back of the building all the way to Elizabeth Place, the side of the building by Elizabeth Place, and the front to join the existing right-hand portion of the building. So it's, it's unusual, but the cornerstone of Memorial School isn't in the corner. It's in the center of the building, and it says 1927, right in the middle of the building where they joined three sides to the one side is really what took place. So when they did that, they plastered the ceilings. In order to match the plaster on the three new hallways, they plastered over that beadboard. And what happened was is they, they nailed into it with three quarter inch roofing nails with no grooves in it. And they didn't nail it into the joists above, they just nailed it into the beadboard. So through the weight of the, and they plastered, they put the lath on top of the beadboard, three coats of plaster. Through the years, the weight of the plaster, uh, various leaks through the years, uh, continue to let that, that plaster drop further and further away from the beadboard. When we had the hurricane, a little bit of the water that came in was enough to cause that whole plaster to, to cave. And the plaster and the lath dropped off the beadboard, fell right through the drop ceiling, and mangled all the wires and the lighting and the uh, drop ceiling and the grids. It looks like a, an airplane actually crashed through the building. So once all that took place, we were, I was notified Sunday morning, just after it stopped raining. I went down to the school and we saw what took place. It was, I was really astounded to see how much damage there was. Um, so I knew we were opening school in a week, so therefore we had to go ahead and get that cleaned up, get it replaced, and get ready to open up school for September, uh, September 8th. Um, so that was our plan from there on. As we continued to do the demolition the next day and get the electricians in, we started to realize that that whole ceiling was coming apart further and further down the hallway, which was all beadboard. I think the following Tuesday, as the guys were working cleaning it up, a piece of plaster fell through the first floor under the same location as the above, which was also beadboard on the first floor. A piece of plaster fell through the drop ceiling and was substantially weighted. weighted. Could have really injured somebody walking by. Then we knew we had a really serious problem. We had to go in and then take a look at how much loose plaster there was throughout the entire building, how much of it had to be demolished, replaced, um, because it was lead paint back in those days. We had to worry about air monitoring to make sure that there were no lead paint particles. So I knew we were going to have a delay in opening Memorial School. So on September 1st, we had an engineer come by, and we wanted him to tell us whether he thought it was safe to open and what would need to be do what would need to be done to get the building in shape. Um, so from that end of it, then we may we came back to my office on September 1st and made plans to open school on time and to house all the stu students here at Washington Park. And so that's what we did. And, and uh, through the, by by six o'clock that day that night, we had a letter written to go home to our parents. I started working on a website to provide information. Uh, we started to mobilize contractors to, uh, and engineers and architects to make sure that it, well, the work was going to be done safely and correctly so that it would be safe to open school whenever it did open. And in the meantime, we had a contingency plan here to, uh, to house the students until that time arrived. With the drop ceiling there, you know, uh, whenever we have a storm, we always take a walk around and to make sure there aren't any leaks. And if there was a water leak in a drop ceiling, you would know the ceiling tile would be wet it would start to 
you know, buckle and would, would end up collapsing. And there was no way for us to know we had any leak, which we, I don't believe we had, because the roof at Memorial is really only five to six years old. It's brand new. The fact that one shingle did blow off, that was spotted in the cause for the water that we took in. But above the drop ceiling, we didn't have any idea of what was happening. And the fact that the hurricane came on a Saturday and the collapse occurred anywhere between Saturday night and Sunday at around noontime uh, was a good thing and actually a blessing because had it happened during the course of a school day with students, let's say, outside their classrooms going to another place, um, students could have been injured with you know metal drop ceiling falling down and <coughs> BX cables loose, lighting, electric, you know, electric running through everything. So the fact that it happened when nobody was in the building was a great thing. Uh, we actually had two insurance companies. We, uh, one insurance company will, will definitely cover everything related to the hurricane collapse on both floors. Our, our previous insurance company, we went to them to see what we, can, we, what we could muster from uh, some of the previous damage and leaks that we had. Um, so we have, they haven't gotten back to us on that yet. Um, the costs are somewhere around a hundred some thousand dollars exactly. I don't have those numbers just yet. We're still trying to, you know, figure out from our vendors and contractors what those costs were. Um, and then we're also, there's FEMA money out there. So some of it is going to impact on our budget. I think the three hallways that we replaced, all the drop ceiling and all of the lighting, in order to make sure that the ceilings above that were adequate, that may be, have to be incurred by our budget and that would not be covered from insurance costs because we voluntarily took that down for the safety and well-being of the students who entered the building. So uh, there's going to be an impact for the, on our budget for the cost of that, but we will get some money back from insurance or FEMA. Had we had to take the plaster down on all four hallways on both floors, it would have really been significant time-wise in that uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it in such a short time. And then the cost of ripping that plaster down and put sheetrock above it uh, would have been an added cost and time constraint. We did put all new drop ceilings and lighting in anyway. So um, from that, we also had containers for dumpsters to get rid of debris. We had architectural fees. We had engineering fees um, as well as contractual fees. So, And we alerted the county superintendent of schools every step of the way. Uh, about how to repair this and what the cost would be and going through the process of hiring people without uh, the opportunity to go to bid and have PA contractors bid on the job. I'm actually very, very pleased. Uh, I think that the, most, the, the thing that I'm the most pleased about is uh, our parents were very cooperative and very kind and very patient uh, with the issue. Uh, I think we had a board meeting on, on September 7th I did a PowerPoint presentation. It's on our website now if anybody cares to take a look at it. Uh, I tried to be as thorough as I can and outline the safety issues. And our parents were very understanding that we, had, we did what we had to do and that we took you know, the precautions to make sure things would be safe uh, and quickly expedited for the return, number two. And number three, that they would receive quality education in the time it took to get Memorial back into shape. Uh, we anticipated by October 1st that things would be ready to go. Uh, thanks to Joe Pacelli, our construction uh, coordinator, uh, we actually opened up school much earlier than we anticipated. We bought the kindergarten, the preschool, two kindergarten classes, preschool and first grade back on, uh, I believe it was the uh, uh, a Wednesday, uh, the 24th or 22nd or something like that. And then we brought everybody back the Monday the 26th, which was uh, you know, a week in advance uh, of our return day. So it happened very quickly and um, without incident, we moved people back in two shifts. And uh, actually Memorial is better for it now. The, the new lighting, because all the lighting in the hallways had to take place, uh, is brand new lighting, it's much brighter. And you know, let me reiterate for our viewers, that it was really problems only in the one hallway, the Williams Place hallways on both floors, first and second floor, not the basement. The rest of it, minor repairs were made. We didn't have to rip down any sheetrock. One classroom had to have some of the uh, ceiling stabilized above that and to the satisfaction of the engineers and the architects. So um, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was gonna be. And it happened a lot, we were able to remedy the problem a lot quicker than we thought we could.